Sportages. Sport gets smarter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sportages video cast, where we bring you insights into the sporting world, straight from athletes, sports bibs, sports pro- professionals, and more. Our guest today is Rahmat Khan, a former squash player and arguably the most decorated coach in squash history. From the famous Squash Khan family of Pakistan, Rahmat trained his cousin Jahangir Khan, the greatest squash player of all time, to numerous victories in the 70s and 80s. Rahmat is now based in California in the USA. Welcome to the show, Rahmat. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you very much, Zoo. Thanks for having me. Look, it's great. It's obviously a, a big pleasure talking to you. My uh, my dad is a big, big fan uh, of the work that you obviously did. And, you know, I grew up hearing stories of, oh, did you hear how, uh, you know, Rehmat trained his, his cousin and took him to the top of the world, made him the most successful athlete ever, has done all these incredible things in the game. So... From what I understand, and I think I strongly believe that, you know, you need no introduction. We don't need to hear about your story. It's been covered so many times. But what I would like to hear is a little bit about what you've been doing in the USA, how long you've been there, and what it's been like. Uh, Thanks very much, Zhu. As your dad said, yes, this is the history. And time to time when you read about it and we uh, come to know about it, it gives us motivation really to keep going. Uh, like recently in January, there, the reader, Reader's Digest, as you know, is the most popular digest in the world. They did an article on us in 80, 80s and they have now brought classic articles which they had done in the past. And one of them is article on Jahangir and myself definitely yeah. uh, was good article. So it's nice to see that, you know, and that went all over the world in different languages. So that was a very good promotion for a squash. So any opportunity you can get to promote the game uh, till we die, really, you know, squash is in us. We are in a squash, you know, so that's what I said. Every opportunity we get, I think we should go ahead with it and take it and do the best for our country, for our family, for a squash, you know, that's where it is. So I actually moved here about nine years ago. Uh, And uh, in U.S., actually, mainly squash is played in students who really want to get uh, scholarship or, uh, you know, get into the universities. That's what the race is for. So the parents spend a lot of money on them to play because squash, like any other sport, they have some seats. Uh, So if you are a good squash player, you can get into these universities. I have sent, I would say, about 20 kids uh, almost in different universities for education after training the training, you know, taking the training and then getting prepared for their teams. So that's what we've been doing here. But obviously, uh, they are not very much into it uh, to become professionals. They go into universities, they learn, you know, they play for the university. And after that, we don't hear anything about them. So I, I would really love to see that the game becomes more professional here than just coaching in the clubs. Uh, for the students and when that happens yeah it's a big country it's uh, lots of opportunities here for pros so lots of tournaments come come here yeah pros do come here but local players i don't see anyone doing there but recently one of our pakistani player shah jahan khan who has uh, become a national of usa and he's joined now uh, us squash and he's i think about uh, under uh, i think 45 ranks something like that in the world so that's a very good thing to see that he will be playing for U.S. And uh, I'm helping him along with his father, who's been helping him quite a lot, Zarak Jahan Khan. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, it's good. We both would like to help, uh, which will be good for him, which will be good for U.S., which will be good for Pakistan, and of course, good for a squash. So this is what I'm doing at the moment. But for the last one year, as I said, the clubs are closed. Uh, I actually have academy along with uh, Farzad Jafri, a very good coach and a good friend of mine. Uh, it's called Club Sports Saint Ramon. That's where we have our academy and lots of kids. So when the club opens, we will start that again. 
And obviously, I would like to spread my academies into different areas in, in the country. Absolutely, absolutely. There's so much, uh, so much to break down there. But of course, uh, you know, I, I think that absolutely the coverage that squash sort of gets as of late is very, very minimal to obviously the time when you were coaching uh, Jahangir Khan and you don't see it in, in magazines like the Reader's Digest anymore, as you mentioned. And similarly, I think, you know, all the discussion about U.S. squash is all about varsity getting into Harvard, getting into Ivy League schools. So it's, it's essentially that. Um, but let's take a step back, Rahmat, and talk a little bit about the time before you obviously moved to the, to the U.S. and after, you know, Jahangir's career finished. Uh, you stopped coaching him. What did you get up to and why? And, you know, what what was life about at that point? What were you sort of aiming to do? What were you up to? Actually, when I uh, left Jahangir, then I was touring all over the world. Uh, and I went to India as well. I went to different countries. I did a little bit coaching in India as well. I was a director of squash coaching for uh, Maharashtra. Yeah. And also there, you see, the kids wanted to do well in squash so they can come and get education in, in U.S. And I've sent about a dozen kids here. But that was the thing. Then I went to England where I started coaching Carla Khan. Uh, she's my cousin's daughter. Uh, but I didn't spend much time with her because very quickly after that, when I was in England, I was offered a job because Jahangir Khan rang me. Uh, from Pakistan, that new chief of air uh, force federation president has come and come and do some coaching here by you. So I said, okay, Jahangir, if you think it's a good thing and they're going to really uh, support, I will come. So I had to give up coaching with Carla, but actually I did offer them that I am going to Pakistan and Carla is most welcome to join me there. I will not charge you anything because I will be the coach there uh, for Pakistan. And if she comes there, she can train with me there. She can train with the boys there. And then she can go and conquer the world, then come back. But base should be for her is Pakistan. But they didn't take it up, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, but then I went to Pakistan. I had a meeting with them. And I saw and I felt that the new chief, uh, Musaf Ali Mir, uh, late Musaf Ali Mir, he was very keen. And he wanted to do something for the squash and Pakistan, which they've been suffering really. So I took up the job. They made me national coach and I set up the academy there. And uh, everything was done because they gave me free hand. Fantastic. We worked very hard. I had 11 kids uh, from different parts of Pakistan. And uh, we made the base first in Abbottabad and then moved to Islamabad. And the most beautiful squash complex, I would say, in the world is in Islamabad. Uh, there are lots of good uh, uh, complexes, of course, but this is fantastic because it has everything there. It has international sized soccer grounds, hockey grounds, tennis, swimming, you name it, all the athletic facilities are there, along with two complexes. One is three-wall glass, yeah. which was built in 80, 80s, uh, called Russian Khan Complex, built by Chinese and fantastic, the biggest built gallery, purpose-built gallery in the world. Yeah. And then the next uh, uh, with it was old glass court. So we have two uh, major courts like that. And we have, I think, about uh, uh, seven other courts along it. So it's a very good uh, complex, really. That's where I trained the team. And it was very difficult because for 20 years, the players, junior I'm talking about, because I said I want to train the junior first because that's where, you know, they, I will be grooming them and they can go forward and then they can do whatever in the senior. So training them was a little difficult because for 20 years they had not won any big title like World Championship or British Open, you know, all these things. But this is very important because if you are winning, then the players are motivated themselves because they believe in it that your country can do this. But there, as I said, for 20 years, there was no uh, good top-class players being there. John Sher, Jahangir, you name it. 
but they had not won the world championship or british open so putting them together and taking them through with my experience i put everything there we worked very hard very very hard and fortunately i would say the world championship which was after one year had actually postponed it for six months later so it was 18 months i had which i was very happy yeah. in 18 months uh, we went for the british open and we actually uh, won the under 15 British Open after 21 years, won under 17 after 21 years, and we got bronze in under 19. Will Strop had won the British Open. But that was a good step, good start for me. We came back, we started working hard again. And 18 months later, in Chennai, India, the World Championship was going on, and we beat England after 20 years. Yeah. And we took the title for Pakistan. Yeah. So that was great achievement, obviously. Then we came back to Pakistan and, you know, fantastic. The game was promoted very well. And then we went for the British Open next year. And after 21 years, we took the under-19 title as well. Yeah. I took under 13, 15, 17, 19 all. And we took it twice. Yeah. And we took the World Open Championship from I England. Then two years later, again, we beat Egypt in Pakistan. So we were ch world champion for four years. And in this time, as I said, I took uh, about 20 gold medals in major tournaments for Pakistan. Fantastic. Everything was going very well. The game was promoted well. The boys were doing well. I was grooming them to take them into senior. Because like Rami Ashur and Tariq Momin and Will Strop and all these people... My players were along with them in juniors, right? And when I the time came, I take them to the senior. There was politics started. Politics started against me. Musaf Ali Mir, you know, late Musaf Ali Mir had died in air crash. Yeah. New, uh, you know, set of uh, committee came, and they were really not listening much. They were listening to everybody who were against me because success creates jealousy. So now everybody is very jealous of me because what I did, what they had not done, they couldn't do it for 20 and 21 years. Yeah. So the politics started and the politics, I don't like that. Yeah. Because in my uh, you know, thing, I was national coach and I was training all the boys, whether they were from Lahore, Peshawar, Quetta or Karachi, doesn't matter, Sin. They were all like my own children. I had no brother or cousin or anybody playing like that. But the problem here, you see, came to me that everybody wanted their own children to be ahead of anybody else. So they'll pull, start pulling legs and creating problems and hurdles in front of me. And I got so fed up. But luckily, as I said, I got some guy in Tiaz from Musharraf yeah. for my services. And I was happy. I said, that's it. What I did in five years with them, I got them two world championships for you know, uh, uh, world championship for junior. I got them two British Opens, all the title and many other tournaments. I think that's enough. Instead of going into politics and fighting with them and think this is not my nature, really. I resigned. Yeah. I resigned and then I moved to, because when Kuwait find out that I've left Pakistan, quickly they got onto me and they took me to Kuwait. So this was the story after, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I was in Pakistan. Wow, that's uh, that's is quite a bit, and it's you know it's it's really a shame that it sort of reached this point. And you know it's interesting that you bring up uh, your niece Carla Khan because we'd spoken with her a while ago as well, and she had a lot of things to say about the politics and the squash in Pakistan today. Uh, you know, and that obviously sort of pushed you to to resign and, and leave and, and all the sort of nepotism that you're talking about and bringing their kids uh, into, into playing and becoming professionals. Look, let's be honest. Like I look at squash in Pakistan and I take the parallel of squash in Egypt today. Um, mm -hmm. You go to Egypt, Egypt, the number one sport is still football. Yeah. Just Right, that's Just like right. Like how, yeah. let's say in Pakistan, the number one sport is is very unlikely that it's going to change from cricket anytime soon. Everyone is watching right. it, but right. when you go to a football field in Egypt, they've got ten squash courts attached to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. You don't see that at, you know, the National Stadium in Karachi or the Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore. It's all focused on cricket, from what I understand. Right. Um, right. When we look at squash in Pakistan, there's there's obviously been a decline. You know, it's really interesting. I was I was in an Uber the other day here in Canberra, and my driver was from Pakistan, and we were just talking about sport. And he told me he plays badminton. I said, you know, I go for I go with some friends every week to have a bit of a hit at the squash court. And he tells me, that's amazing. I found out two weeks ago that the best squash player from our from our country is the best squash player to have ever played. His name is Jahangir Khan. And he didn't know this. He came here from Pakistan three years ago. He only found right. out because he was watching TV. And somebody did a, a little sh- five-minute show on legends of the past in sport. And, you know, uh, Jahangir's name showed up. So squat, the reality, the stark reality is that squash has declined very significantly in, in Pakistan. And, you know, you touch on it a little, but, a little bit. And I don't know how much you would want to speak about it. But, uh, you know, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the reasons that the game has declined so much there. And again, using that Egypt example, you know, it's, it's, it's not like Pakistan's uh, professionals involved in squash in the 60s, 70s, 80s, such as yourself at the professional level, were any less than the Egyptians. But they've been able to continue that cycle where... You know, the players that are coming out in the 2000s, 2010s, 2020s, now we're looking at players like Asal, the next big thing, you know, and it's just the continuous structure, whereas we haven't seen that in Pakistan. Why do you think that is? I guess I want to ask a little bit about that. And of course, it's up to you how much you'd like to share about it. Um, But why do you think it is? And then I guess we'll get into what do you think has to be done? to change that? Well, as I said, when I started in Pakistan, uh, in five years, I brought the juniors to the level where they became world champion. And as I said, they had beaten Egyptians and British you know, players, all of other players in the world. Now, the second step for them was to go into seniors because the people who ha- they had beaten in the, you know, in the tournaments and in, uh, in the world championship, England, their players went into the senior, became world champions. So that exactly what I wanted with them, to now take them further in the senior and make them world champion there. And of course, I had the experience with Jahangir. When I started training Jahangir, Jahangir was 15 years old. So he was a junior. But by the time he was 17, he became the senior champion. And other experience, as I said to you, Jahangir... Uh, winning and then losing to John Sher nine times, that's another experience that I actually uh, 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 proved that, that if a player is finished and the world thought Jangri is finished, I said no. And I brought him back again to win the world title again beat John Sher. So I had all these experiences. So why not? Why couldn't I actually continue with those uh, juniors of mine? That's where, as I said, the politics came. They took my players away from me and gave it to another coach. Okay, I don't mind. If the other coach is capable of doing what I was going to do or what I had done, fantastic. But no, I, I'm sorry to say that, but there is no other player, other coach in Pakistan or anywhere in the world who has done what Rahmat has done. So what makes you take the players away from me? They were my kids. I have worked with them for five years. Why take them away from me and give it to the, another coach who does not have the same record as Rahmat Khan has? This is what I call is politics, yeah. right? Not thinking about Pakistan, but thinking about themselves and whatever. That's what made my heart break and I resigned. But if they had given me chance, yes. Then if I could conquer the world in junior level and second step was the senior, that the time would have to, you know, shown us what I could do. But um, unfortunately, I didn't get that chance, right? I went to Kuwait and I trained the Kuwaiti team who you could not dream 
because their level of you know squash was not good at all but training them for four years zoo alhamdulillah in asian championship kuwait beat hong kong which was above us india which was above, above us and players like uh, sort of goshal was in that team but acharya was in that team we beat them we beat pakistan in and pakistan team shahid zaman yasir bhat they were all top 40 35 30 uh, rank player senior player we beat them and we lost 2 1 to malaysia so if i could do something like that with that team you can imagine what i could have done with the pakistan team because talent is there no doubt about it talent is there talent is not given by coaches yeah. talent is given by allah yes our job is he creates the player he gives 50 percent talent and 50 percent is our job he leaves this to us and if we can do that properly the result will be there yeah but unfortunately in that 50 <laughs> percent either we can't do it because we don't know how to do it or we don't have the experience or there are lots of uh, hurdles in front of us people you know don't want us to do that so the, all these things creates problem and that what is happening in pakistan at the moment talent will always be there in pakistan cricket hockey squash snooker even boxing believe me there's a lot of talent but the right person is required who is working with clear intentions for pakistan yeah of course with experience non experience cannot doesn't matter how good intention you have mm -hmm. you know he he has to learn that first so if you have somebody if you don't have somebody uh, with that, that experience yeah then okay then this is life but if you have somebody with a, that kind of experience take advantage of that support him don't make hurdle in front of them instead make a good team for him sure so because this work cannot be done on your own mm -hmm. when i was there as i said i created good team for myself this was good team until musafili mir uh, late musafili mir died and then everything went into different things right so if you have a good team then you can create something incredible right with jahangir jahangir and myself was good team of two people and then whoever was with us to promote the game our manager all these things and we showed the result so the team is very important whatever you want to do yeah. and as i said that's what they are lacking so they have to clear all these things make a good team and run by a person who loves pakistan whose intentions are clear who has experience and who is motivated to do something and if you support him <laughs> i think you need about not more than three years really to bring your plates right at the top yeah sure um <laughs> You know, it's it's it is a real it is a real shame that uh, that's the situation as it is because as you're saying the talent exists, uh, players have that capability over there in Pakistan, but they're not you know they're not getting the right support, mentoring, training. Um, what is what is the future you know of of the game there? Because today when I look at the PSA World Rankings. Uh, and compare it to 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago, it's it's pretty poor in, from a Pakistani perspective. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that we have seen in terms of squash being played, we obviously had the the tournament in somewhere in Balochistan recently. Uh, so there was a bit of, you know, there's a bit of activity happening, which is, uh, which is good because except for here in in Australia and New Zealand, where there's regular squash going on, it's not really happening globally, obviously, with the current situation. So what do you think is the future for squash there? Um, leaving aside the politics, do you think that there are any players who can come out of it? Or is it still going to be this cycle where players such as, like, for example, Shah Jahan Khan have to move to another country and decide to represent that country because they think that it's more, uh, you know, there's, there, there's more opportunity for them and it's, it's more appropriate for them to take that route rather than playing uh, with Pakistan. 
Yes, Zhu, because like Shah, okay, he's a good player. He's working very hard. His father is working very hard with him. He went to play. He wanted to play for Pakistan. But on a couple of occasions, when he can give you good result, they made him sit and they put their favorite player to play the match and he lost. When Shah could have given better uh, result there. Again, politics, okay, don't let him play, right? So they did, they did not give him any facilities or anything like that. He has to pay for his own airfare and everything. If you do that kind of a thing, then the heart is broken right and he, was, he came back and he didn't want to do that. He wanted, of course, his time is running out. So he's getting better opportunities in USA. He will do that. So like Shah, there are probably many players in Pakistan, talented players, but maybe poor players don't have anybody uh, to support them. And that talent will be ruined. That will be just finished like that. You have the talent. You choose the talent and give them support. Financially, good coaching, all the opportunities, provide them good matches, good tournaments. You don't just become world champion like that. Yeah. You have, in competition, you have Egypt, okay? So find out what is Egypt doing. Just do that, what Egypt is doing, you will do much better. But just not that. If I find out what Egypt is doing, what England is doing, what Australia is doing, I will create something better than them. Like Jahangir, I found out what Jeff Hunt is doing, yeah. what John Barrington is doing, what others are doing, and put them together, I created better plan for Jahangir, better than them. From training point of view, pr from promotion point of view, from uh, finance point of view, all these things. Then we showed the result. Result doesn't just come like that. So if I was them, I would find out what the world is doing first. And then come up with a plan better than them. Yeah. Not just like them, better than them. And then see the result. Pakistan should be a country who creates, who invents things in squash, not following Egypt or following England or other things. We have the record. No other country has that. So we should be able to do something. I, I created unsquashable racket. Yeah. I was the inventor for unsquashable racket. And before that, so, so the rackets were wood made, wooden rackets showing the wood, little bit, you know, fiberglass on the shoulder and this and that. Yeah. I created the racket, old, dark, black, white, blue, and red, coated by fiberglass. Yeah. And some people said to me, this looks like a toy. This doesn't look like a squash racket. I said, yes. But you will see in the future what happens. What happens today? You can see what the rackets have changed. Mm. But the first racket was unsquashable. Yeah. Unsquashable, Ramat Khan Black was shown in... Uh, uh, time in London Times uh, uh, newspaper, yeah. the things which are black these days, and one one thing was squash racket. I'm just giving you an example yeah. that you have to create things. Sure. You know, I came up with a colored ball first time. Mm -hmm. I made the coaching video first time, play squash the Khans. Yeah. I did the promotion for Jahangir. No one has done ever like that. Mm. Right? So these are the things. If you put everything together from different angles and with a good team, then as I said, Pakistan should be the one who invents things in squash. Yeah, sure. Right? And the world should follow. So if, if uh, they do it properly and they get a good team, uh, you know, there are lots of things, lots of people who have helped the squash in different countries. Abbas Khan helped the squash in uh, UAE, right? Uh, lots of other people, you know, in Singapore, in uh, in USA, every so get them, get them together. Yeah. But the one who is going to actually lead them, that person has to be good with clear intentions, working for Pakistan, not for himself, and no politics. Sure, absolutely. And uh, just to wrap things up, Rahmat, I, you know. There's the you you can you can obviously just tell how passionate you are and you you have this clear vision as you've always had as a coach even when you were with Jahangir everyone knows about it and you know you you recognize what the problems are. You've touched a little bit on you know what 
uh, you intend to do once, you know, the pandemic situation is better. But do you ever see yourself returning to, to Pakistan uh, to coach athletes there? Uh, or do you feel that until the internal politics that is not removed, you have no interest in being a part of that? Um, what are your thoughts there? Uh, it's a very tough decision, really, because here in America, I'm having very comfortable life, right? Opportunities are there, no politics, nothing, you know. But because, obviously, I love Pakistan. Uh, so is like anybody else, really, who was outside those coaches. But why are they outside, not in Pakistan? Because they are making a living for their families. Without any politics, they are at least providing good facilities for their families, education, medical, all these things are, you know, done here. But as I said, we all want, we all want to do something for Pakistan. If Pakistan ever asks me, then as you said, yes, the first thing will be to clear this atmosphere of politics and things. Sit with me. I will really ask uh, the chief of um, uh, Pakistan Federation, President Pakistan Federation. I will ask him, I will ask uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan if they really want to do something good for squash or good for any sport in Pakistan. You have to bring those people who have given something to Pakistan, who have given the results. Make them all sit together because it's not just a squash problem. It's a problem for the sports. Yep. And as I said, if I can do something great uh, in a squash, my ideas with somebody else's uh, help and, you know, giving him the duty, but ideas can put together. We can do same thing for cricket. We can do same thing for hockey, boxing, you name it. Yep. So why can't we be sitting on one table? Right. But of course, if you ask me, uh, you know, will you go back? I will say, yeah, if they can guarantee me that there will be no politics, if they can guarantee me that my family will be looked after properly as I'm, you know, bringing opportunities for them here, yes, then why not? This will be a more than more than a great pleasure and a duty for me to go back to Pakistan and do something for Pakistan. Uh, putting that beside, even if we are in a different country, as you, we are still really doing things for Pakistan, for Pakistan name and being a good citizen in other other country and good person in other country, a good Muslim other country, we are actually helping Pakistan, Islam, and squash. So that's what we, I've been doing it whenever I am, really, not just in Pakistan. But as I said, if these things could be put together, and there are two people, one is Prime Minister of Pakistan, and one is President of Pakistan Squash Federation. They can do so much if they want to do. Don't listen to too many people. Decide, call the people, who are correct and right sort of people for Pakistan, sit with them and put the things together. And inshallah, we'll be on the way to bring many more glories for Pakistan. Rama, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your insights, your wealth of knowledge on the game, and of course, your passion and dedication to, to squash and squash in Pakistan. And look, I wish you all the best with everything and uh, anyone who's rooting for the game in in Pakistan, such as myself, would, you know, would, without a doubt, tunnel vision. You are, uh, you know, in, in all of our opinions, the, the man to, to lead that resurgence. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, some things are not in our hands. But, Rehmat, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And I, and I wish you all the best with everything. And look forward to seeing seeing what comes out of you know squash squash in the uh, region that you work in, and also uh, your future with as a coach. Thank you, Zushan. Thank you very much for having me here. You gave me the opportunity to speak my mind, and that's a great help. Believe me, because people like you can obviously turn the minds or give the knowledge to people what is happening, what is right, and what is wrong. So I would say you're doing a great job yourself and you're doing very good for Pakistan. So promote the game, my friend, if you can, and promote the right people, right? And I'm so sure that if people can hear you, then slowly, slowly, things will come together. 
we are Muslims, we believe in Allah, and if our, our intentions are correct, somehow, somehow, we will get our goal. Thank you very much indeed. Absolutely, absolutely, thank you. And for everyone watching or listening, uh, be sure to visit our website and check out what we've got coming up, the Squash Summit 2021, a virtual conference featuring squash technology, the future of squash, and a lot more. Attendance is free. We'll be sharing the registration links, all the information. Everything will be on our social media shortly, so be sure to get on, register. Thank you.